years. So would you give Patrick Workman a big DMSC welcome? Thanks, Brian. As Brian said, I'm Patrick Workman, and I sell cars at Facebook. What that means is I work with all automotive companies and regional dealer associations, as well as dealerships, channel partners, automotive portals, you name it. If it has to do with automotive or has wheels or floats, those are things that we work with here at Facebook Automotive. We really appreciate everyone taking the time in order to come to Orlando to listen to all these great speakers talk about different digital marketing strategies that hopefully you can bring home and really execute as soon as you get back to your dealership. So we're excited to be here. We have a lot of information to share today, and we're really excited about this. Um, first off, I wanted to set the table in terms of what we're going to be talking about and what Facebook is. So um, what we're doing at Facebook isn't exactly like rocket science. It's something that's been happening forever. So since the beginning of time, humans have been getting together and telling stories about who they are, what they're doing, and what they're all about. So what we've done is provided this platform in order to enable them to do this. Uh, Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, he oftentimes refers to Starbucks as being the third place. So your first place is your home, your second place is where you work, and then there's this third place. And for a long time, that third place was uh, like a Starbucks. If we go, if we harken back to the days of yore and go way, way back, it, this could have been like a water pump where you'd go into the middle of town and actually got your water and then talk, talked about the, the gossip of the town and what people were doing and who said what, when, and where, and whose cow was stolen and things like that. Um, that was where you had those conversations. Now, Facebook is the place where these conversations are taking place. And although our mission is to make the world more open and connected, and we've connected over a billion people around the world, which is the first time that's happened in human history, you know, our, we're far from being done. So we are a new company. We celebrated our ninth birthday on Monday, and we're really excited about this. But what we're doing is all really old. I mean, this isn't exactly new. It's people having conversations with each other. And what we've done is provide a, for, provided a platform for the, these people in order to like, to share, to comment, to read, to ultimately want, and most importantly, in order to connect with their friends, families, brands, and things that they really care about. So that's the power that the Facebook platform allows. And we're just able to scale and amplify that message to a very large audience very quickly. So the reason that this is all happening is because of the authentic identity that Facebook provides. So if we go, again, back in the day, remember um, some of the earlier internet services. So how many of you guys logged in with an AOL account back in the day? We have like Prodigy, CompuServe, over the modems, like, like those types of noises. My mom would always pick up the phone. I was trying to play Doom with my friends. Going back and forth, I was kind of a geeky kid. That's what I was doing a lot of. So back then, it was pretty easy to hide on the internet. So I could have been Aardvark uh, 421. Like, this was me. And I would go out, and I'd go on forums and talk about Aardvark, me being Aardvark 421. And I'd say whatever I wanted to say, because I could hide behind this cloak of being someone that I really wasn't. What Facebook has enabled is, through our platform, you are yourself. So on Facebook, I am Patrick Workman. And Patrick Workman has a profile picture that is Patrick Workman. It's a picture of me pretending to DJ at a Patron kind of party that I went to that had a really cool photo booth. And I got really excited and took a really cool profile picture. So I, I like that. But we can all do this. So in order to validate yourself on Facebook, you have to provide that, one, you are who you are. And we validate that either through your email address or telephone number. But then we ask that you put a profile picture up there that represents who you are. And these are very, very important because it allows people to be themselves online. And everything that you generate and you do online is a reflection of who you are as a person. So this entire web is being built around people. And this doesn't just apply to Facebook. This applies to all of the companies that are actually building products for the uh, kind of modern internet. And this is causing marketers in order to kind of change the way that they're looking at things. Whereas before, strategies were very disruptive. And you could just yell really loud and get a message in front of people. Now it's necessary in order to connect with people. Because disruptions don't work, and it turns people off. Where people used to really search and seek out information, now they have the ability to discover what's really important or going to be relevant for them. So 
rather than me seeking out and calling 10 friends and asking them what type of car I should buy, um, I can now go on Facebook and with a simple question, I'm in the market for a car, what should I consider? My social circle is now providing me this information. And this is creating a very lightweight action. So before, I mean, think about the, the monumental task necessary in order to just find your dealership. So if I were new to your town and I wanted to find a car dealership, what do I do? I drive around aimlessly trying to go into dealership to dealership. Maybe I'll open up a Yellow Pages, like the ultimate heavyweight device, and go to car dealerships and see who the car dealerships might be in there, or get the Sunday, get the Sunday paper and find out all the greatest specials to make sure that I'm getting the best deal. I mean, this is the way that people used to shop. What we're doing is providing a lightweight way in order for people to get that information very quickly from people that they trust as themselves. So this is something, again, this happens every day. As you're going to be having lunch here after my presentation, you're going to be talking about what's happening and good things that you've learned and bad things that you've learned and how you feel about this and that. And this Facebook is, a, is the exact same environment because that's how humans are interacting. Again, we're just pro providing a, pl a platform to make all this happen. What this has done for you, and this is what's really exciting, is used to be that only big stodgy businesses and people that had multi-million dollar budgets could communicate kind of at scale and really spread a message. What Facebook is empowered is it doesn't matter how big or small you are because all business is now local business. So these big stodgy marketers are having to develop relationships at a local level and this is where you guys come in because you are the local arm for the brands that you represent. So thinking about how you can connect with these consumers on a local level is very critical to understanding how you're going to market to them and how they're going to perceive your brand. So all of these conversations are taking place, again, on Facebook, and these, this happens in a couple of places. The primary place that people connect on Facebook is in the newsfeed. So for those of you that aren't on Facebook, the newsfeed is the waterfall of information that is in the middle of Facebook. So, you log in, you're gonna see what your, what your friends and family and brands and artists and anything that you're following, what they're saying on a regular basis. And this isn't just occurring on desktop, it's also occurring in mobile. And from a mobile perspective, newsfeed is literally in the palm of your customer's hands because it takes up the entire screen. So your posts through Facebook mobile are, that's your entire experience. And any of you that are using Facebook mobile, which most of you, which we'll go into here in a second, um, you, you've experienced this and kind of seen how big that interaction can actually be. So people are really engaged on Facebook. 88% of Facebook users in the United States are actually content creators, and they're creating a billion stories a day. So if you think about how big that is, like a billion stories are being created. And these stories can range from a like, it could be a share, it can be a comment, it can be a check-in, it can be uploading a photo, it can be uploading a video, you can do numerous things. And these photo, the, all these actions are seen 40 billion times a day in the United States through newsfeed. So that's how many people are going kind of back and forth. Uh, just a show of hands, how many people aren't listening to me right now and are on Facebook? Yeah, it always happens, tons of people. You guys checking in maybe, checking in watching presentation about Facebook, from Facebook. It's really ironic. Yeah, yeah, it happens all, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's good, take a picture, it's good stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is just the way that people are interacting with, with our platform. And Americans on Facebook, we're really engaged. So we estimate there's 173 million users, or Americans, that are on uh, Facebook. And these people are returning to Facebook um, on a fairly regular basis. So 65% of this audience is coming back on a, a daily basis. How many people watch the Super Bowl? Kind of a big football game that happened on Sunday? Okay, there were 108 million people that showed up that uh, watched the Super Bowl. Every day we deliver a Super Bowl. So there's 108 million Americans that are going to Facebook in some capacity. So that's the type of audience that we're producing on a regular basis, and that's your opportunity. So your customers are on Facebook because that's where people are going. Now, if we take a look, this is from Comscore, they estimate that seven out of 10 internet users in the United States are on Facebook. So how many of you, I used to ask the question, how many of you uh, are on Facebook? Then it's just a flood of people. How many people aren't on Facebook? No need to be shy. Anyone isn't on Facebook? Cool, well, after this presentation, I'm gonna be sitting over there in the corner, and you can come over, we're handing out free Facebook memberships today, so. 
I'll hand those out to you. We'll set you up with an account. It's really easy. Or you can just go to Facebook.com, click a couple buttons, and you're going to be in. But by and large, most internet users, if you're on the internet, you're going to be utilizing Facebook. And our audience represents the full gamut of people, too. So this isn't just kids. This is everyone. In fact, one of our largest growing demographics are those uh, individuals that are over 55 plus. So this is important. I don't, I don't know how many of you connected with your parents and or grandparents or maybe great grandparents that are on Facebook. I mean, for myself personally, Facebook's changed my relationship with my mother because I'm on the road all the time and I don't live in the same area that my mother lives in. But anything that I do on Facebook, she's going to like, she's going to comment. She still doesn't understand how Facebook Messenger works because she, she constantly sends, how are you doing now? What are you doing? I mean, give it a presentation, mom, especially when I have the internet up and she's messaging me. It's kind of embarrassing at times. But, but this is the way that people are really connecting, especially with those that don't live around them and aren't in the same area. And they're connecting for more time than any other site. So Comscore says that 20% of, of all time spent on the internet in the United States is spent on Facebook. So if you guys are writing anything down out there, write down that, okay? 20% of all time in the United States spent on the internet is spent on Facebook. So a fifth of the time spent on the internet in the United States is spent on Facebook. So they're here, and they're doing stuff, and they're coming back on a regular basis. And this is particularly, import, uh, particularly important when it relates to mobile. Because as you can see, people on a monthly basis are spending nine hours on Facebook, and our recent acquisition of Instagram means that they're spending 13 hours per month on a Facebook property. Far and away more than any other service that's out there. And it's really important to focus on this mobile component because this is what matters. So the, the, the future is mobile, and that future is now. It's not like you're going to catch up to mobile. Like, mobile's here. In fact, this year, two-thirds of all devices that were shipped were mobile devices. So this isn't necessary to have a mobile strategy. At Facebook, we are a mobile company, and we're developing all of our products going forward for mobile devices and tablets. And the advantage for marketers or users alike is it's a seamless experience across all, all channels. So whether you're on desktop, on a tablet, or on mobile, you don't have to create a separate Facebook mobile page or a separate Facebook mobile strategy. Those things aren't necessary. It's just Facebook is Facebook, and it's across devices, and that's that. So social as kind of an, object, uh, as an objective for what you're looking to accomplish isn't necessary. So we've heard stories of people, uh, of dealerships empowering social media people that are just doing social media stuff. And if that person is the customer service rep in your dealership, that makes a lot of sense because then they're the ones responding and listening and corresponding with, uh, with your customers. If you have a dedicated person just to do social, uh, it's, it's new. It's kind of going back to the days of we had dedicated internet departments where we thought you know, the internet was here. I mean, I, I, we never had dedicated newspaper departments or a dedicated television department. Like I, maybe do dealerships did, I don't know. I never heard about those. But, um, so having a separate social department or social person doesn't make a lot of sense. What you need to think about is, now in this new age of connections, how can you truly connect and build relationships with your customers that are going to be meaningful and really offer value to the overall so uh, story? So kind of first step in doing that is you got to build a Facebook page. Um, how many of your dealerships do not have Facebook pages? That's, that makes a lot of sense. You're at a digital marketing strategies conference. If you didn't have a Facebook page, that would just be weak. So it, I'm really glad you guys all have Facebook pages. That would have been, I would have been really disappointed. Um, so on your Facebook page, a couple of things of real estate here that you need to pay attention to. So first off, your profile picture, this is you. So every time you do anything, comment on something, this is what's going to represent your dealership to your customers or their friends. So make sure that this picture is a good representation of your dealership. Your logo, great idea to put as your profile picture. Next, you've got your cover photo. This is a big kind of area here that you can play with. Uh, you can put specials, you can put pictures of smiling, happy customers, uh, new vehicles, uh, whatever you want to do. You can kind of merchandise that the way you'd like. Um, it's also very important that you're registering your Facebook page as an automotive in the automotive category. So that's if you're not doing that, make sure within your About Us page that you've assigned that as being an automotive. And then you need to actually create some posts. Now, some things, there might be some providers in the room that don't like to hear this, but here's a, here's a secret. No one goes to Facebook pages. 
Like, how many of you guys go to Facebook pages? You just don't do that. You log into Facebook, you go to the news feed, you absorb posts, you take a look at the posts, you move on, and then you, you're, you, go, on, you go about your day. If something interests you, you might click on a link and you might be directed off-site. Maybe that's gonna take you to an application on that page, but then you're interacting and you're kind of engaging with that content. But all of the activity is occurring in the news feed. So it's necessary to have a a Facebook page, but if you're investing a lot of your resources and time into applications and inventory and things like that on your Facebook page, the reality is, unless you're actively promoting that, no one's ever going to find it because your inventory tab is going to be buried somewhere here, and there's gonna be a little arrow here, and someone's gonna have to click on the arrow of your page that nobody goes to in order to find your inventory. So just things to think about. Now, if you have an active, if you're actively promoting that as something of value to your customers, then that changes the game a little bit. And you can do that through the newsfeed and through your active posts, which we're gonna get into kind of posting strategies in a moment here. But first, once you've created your Facebook page, it's then necessary to establish an audience. And audiences are established through advertising. So this isn't SEO. This isn't I will build it and they will come and we'll load it up with a bunch of juicy keywords and people are just gonna find me out on, out on the web. Like, it doesn't work that way. So in order to get an audience, you have to let your customers know that you're, you have a Facebook page out there, so they, they tell their friends. And at Facebook, we have two different flavors of ads. One, one we call ads, pretty clever. The ads product is what you use in order to reach people that aren't connected to your dealership or your fans in any capacity. So if I just moved to town, I don't know who you are, but I may be in the market for a car, um, you can target ads to me. Okay, I'm not, I have no connections to you at all. Then we have sponsored stories, and sponsored stories are incredibly valuable, and this is really the power of Facebook from a marketing perspective, because this is taking, this is, once I do like your dealership, now you're telling all of my friends that I like your dealership. And when they see an ad, it says, Patrick Workman likes your dealership, or Patrick Workman likes your post, or Patrick Workman likes your offer. And that little bit of social context um, increases the recall of your dealership tremendously. Because if you can remember that your friend was connected to something, you're going to remember that when you're in the market for that something. And I don't know if you've, any of you have experienced this, seeing kind of ads of friends that like things, and then you've been enticed in order to like that same thing. I mean, this is just normal human behavior in the way that we interact with this type of information. So I'll kind of show you how that works. So here's a page post. And this page post, if this was being launched as an ad, could show up on the right-hand side. Now again, I'm new, to the I'm new to your area. I don't know who your dealership is. I don't have many friends in this area. So this is a good way in order to connect me to your dealership. And this can be a post, it can be an ad, it can be a fan acquisition campaign. You can do a lot of things with this real estate. Or you can launch sponsored stories. So as soon as I like your dealership, now you can sponsor that story to all of my friends, saying that, hey, Patrick Workman likes your dealership. And this can show up in the right-hand side in the news feed, or more importantly, on mobile. So you know, the engagement in mobile, that's where people are actually at. So letting my friends know that I like your dealership, you can geo-target this stuff, so it can just be in a, in a set area, because I've got friends all over the place, so you don't want to target my friends in Australia, you just want to focus my people, my friends that are in your backyard, and this is a great way in order to make that happen. Something else that very few dealerships are taking advantage of is sponsoring actions. So, um, how many people are check, have you have you taken a look at how many people are checking into your dealership on Facebook? It always shocks it always shocks me to take a look at like how many people are checking in. You'll see a Facebook page that has 25 likes, but there'll be a thousand people that have checked into this page. It's really remarkable. So if your customers are checking in at your dealership, you can sponsor that story to tell all of their friends that hey, Patrick Workman is at this dealership. So if you think about the power of what this can really do, if I check in at your dealership, and let's say that I just bought a car, and I'm waiting in order to go into F&I, there's a lot of lag time there, and you, as a salesperson, tell this customer, hey, let's take a, let's take a picture of you on your, with your phone, and you should check in at this dealership. So now you have a picture, now the customer has a picture of them on their phone, of them smiling and happy and really excited, maybe jumping up and down in front of your logo, and woohoo, I just bought my new car, and you can check in at your store, you can now sponsor that and tell all of their friends and make sure that they see that they just bought a new car from your dealership. And this is what you've been trying to do forever, like bird dog fees and you know, give, me, give me five names of people that really, 
that, that are in the market for a car today. I mean, this is nothing new. What we've done again is provide a platform in order to really amplify and scale this message. So this is the most underutilized product that we have. It's custom audiences. Has anyone used custom audiences or heard of custom audiences? Probably not. It's normally crickets every time I've said that. A couple people, cool. So high level, this is the way custom audiences work. Um, you have a database of customer information. You have names, telephone numbers, and email addresses. Facebook, in order, to in order to validate identity, we collect telephone numbers and email addresses from our users. This is the way custom audiences work. You upload a, an Excel file of your customer database. We then hash that in an encrypted uh, kind of black box. We don't need your customer information. We've got plenty of customer information ourselves. We then match that up with Facebook user information, and we create a targeting cluster of your customers. So if you're looking to grow your Facebook audience, this is how you grow your audience because you're now growing your audience with customers. There's a lot of techniques in term, terms of growing your audience. If you guys want a lot of fans, give away iPads. Give away Kindle Fires, give away cars. It's, you, you can do that, but none of those people like you. It's like false friends. Like if I stood up here and I said, hey, I got, I, I've, I've had minis for everyone, and I started throwing those out here, you'd be like, wow, this guy from Facebook's really cool. You don't like me, you just want my iPad minis. Like, that's what you're doing. So if you're connecting to your audience with your actual customers and people that actually care, this is, this is the way to really take advantage of Facebook and really create this army of advocates and make sure you're communicating with the right people. So custom audiences is a product that you all have access to. Many of your digital marketing providers are already including this within their solutions. So something to definitely ask them about if you're looking to kind of grow your audience on Facebook in order to really connect with your customers. So Facebook retargeting, here's another solution that we've uh, recently come out with. How many of you guys are doing kind of retargeting in, in general at your dealership? Quite a few of you, that's awesome. Um, for those of you that aren't, and I'll kind of explain retargeting at a, at a kind of higher level, retargeting is if somebody goes to your dealership website and they go to your homepage and then they go to new inventory and then they click on a car and then they're like, uh, okay, this kind of looks cool, this 2013 Ford Focus is nice, uh, I'm going to Facebook. And then they go to Facebook afterwards. And remember, 20% of the time spent on the internet is spent on Facebook, so the likelihood of these people going from your dealership's website to Facebook is really high. What retargeting will do is it'll actually serve an ad on the right-hand side to that customer saying, hey, you were looking at this 2013 Ford Focus, do you want some more information? So you're actually following that customer off Facebook, onto Facebook, and now presenting an opportunity in order to increase the conversion rate of your website, increase the amount of leads that you guys get, create the amount of sales opportunities, sell more cars, boom. Everyone wins. So something if you're not taking advantage of, something to definitely take a look at. And again, a lot of the solution providers in the space um, are offering Facebook retargeting as a part of their overall digital marketing solution. So something to definitely talk to your providers about. So we're gonna dive in a little bit about just kind of how to be creative, or more importantly, how to post through Facebook. And this is tough, because everything I've talked about so far is you build a Facebook page pretty easy. Like, we, any, any one of us could set that up in five, 10 minutes. Um, connecting your customers to your Facebook page, it's advertising, so you spend some money, you get some fans, you've now established a quality audience. Now you have to think about what am I gonna do with this audience? And this is the kind of the hardest part, and this is where people really struggle about Facebook. So what I'm gonna share is just some thought starters about how to interact with these customers as well as provide some solutions that we've seen to be really successful within automotive. So first off, it's necessary to find your voice. So you have to determine who are you. Your car dealership, we know that, but kind of what, what do you represent and who are you in this local market? And once you determine that, then you're gonna understand why anyone would care. Because if people don't care, your voice is irrelevant. So establishing who you are and then why people would care about this is important before you're developing any kind of posting strategy. It's really important when you're doing this to be authentic. So be yourself, your car dealerships, don't shy away from that. You know, it's not necessary to be someone else. Like you are, you are a dealership that people care about and they've obviously liked you so make sure that you represent yourself as such. And you have to be really useful. So if you're not providing value to the overall Facebook user experience, people are gonna tune you out. And to be useful is just you being yourself and offering useful information. This could be tips about when to service your car, how to buy a car, how to lease a car, 
um, things that maybe they don't know about your dealership, services that you offer, just anything that you would like to communicate that you think would offer value to this overall experience, um, this, is, this is a great channel in order to make that happen. And then you have to be entertaining, but don't be too entertaining, because I like a lot of your Facebook pages, and I see a lot of cats wearing hats riding bicycles as pictures. Way too many cute panda bears saying, look how cute this panda bear is, shouldn't you like it? And I gotta tell you, I, I'm not turning to car dealerships in order to be entertained like that. I mean, you guys have some of, the, some of the coolest stuff in order to take pictures of. You have cars, you have cool trucks, you have cool SUVs, you have really nice stuff, big compelling photos that you can take in order to get people really engaged with what you have at your stores. Take advantage of that. I mean, think about if you were selling uh, like uh, uh, wiper fluid. If you had a Facebook page to sell more wiper fluid, I mean, what are you gonna do there? You show pictures of windshield wipers, you do that three times, like what, what's your next photo? Like, you guys have a lot of stuff that you can actually uh, cultivate in order to come up with some really compelling content in order to engage your audience. And it's necessary to be relevant. So in your local communities, you are the authority for cars. So when people are looking for information about buying cars, new cars, used cars, financing cars, buying parts and service, Whatever they're looking for, that's you, and that's what you're representing. So make sure that you are posting and you're as relevant as possible to that, to that uh, end. And then you have to be timely. There's 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 365 days in a year. You have to find your sweet spot in terms of what's working and not working. So um, posting in the morning, happy Monday morning, isn't a great day to buy a car, and then happy Monday afternoon, um, you want to buy a car again, and then posting at night, you know, we're open until 9 o'clock tonight if you're not going to buy a car. And if you do that every single day, you're going to turn off your audience. And I, I see a lot of these things happening. And I, I think the, the reason being is there isn't a set posting strategy. We'll go into that in a moment, too. But it's really important to then listen. And not just listen to your customers and what they're saying and what they're liking and what they're commenting from an insights perspective, but really make sure that if you have a successful post that's going out there and getting a lot of engagement and people are sharing this and commenting and liking, that you're tracking what's actually working. And then just do more of that. Because there's no need to overthink this. If something's working really well, you know, just stick with it. If there's a certain theme or something that's really resonating with your audience and it's driving whatever goal you have, whether, it's, whether that's driving additional traffic back to your website, driving traffic into your dealership, selling more cars, selling more service, what have you, make sure that you're scaling that and you're making that a part of your regular posting strategy. So making sure that you have this posting strategy kind of determined beforehand will eliminate any bad posts. So the, the worst posts happen where somebody has to check a box because it's four o'clock and they sold two cars that day and they're also responsible for posting on Facebook. So here's my Facebook post of the day, blah, it's just not good. And that's kind of what you get. So there has to be some strategic approach to how you're posting and thinking about this. And, and again, the frequency is very important. So don't post too much, don't post too little. You're just posting in that just right, that sweet spot that you see that people are actually connecting with the material that you're sending out. How many of you guys have, uh, this is a good digital marketing company. How, uh, conference. how many of you guys have smartphones? <laughs> okay, everyone's got smartphones. Um, how many of you guys have iPhones or, and or Android? How many of you guys have Blackberries? Just curious. Wow. <laughs> uh, palms? Any palms out there? No palms either, okay. Um, so we have, uh, we have a page manager app on both, uh, available for both uh, iPhone and Android. So uh, if you download this, you can manage your dealership's Facebook page from your mobile phone as well. You can take photos, you can post, you can do things like that. So we now have made that connectivity in your pocket. So you have the ability to take your posts and your content on the road with you. So if you haven't downloaded that and connected that with your Facebook page, highly recommend doing that. So here are just kind of a couple of examples that I, I pulled last night in terms of posts that work really well in order to accomplish a goal. So what are two things that TechCrunch and Fab.com are doing that you're not doing today? Nothing, okay. I'll, I'll give, give you a hint here. There's links here, okay? So there's a couple, here's, here's a pro tip for posting on Facebook. Um, your post should contain 90 characters or less and have a big photo that's engaging. Don't have any text in that photo if you can avoid it. So in this case, they're actually selling a poster that says work hard, stay humble. So that's a little bit different. But big engaging photo, 90 characters or less. And within the 90 characters, make sure you're also attaching a link that does something. So if people want to interact or get more information about this, this is how you're actually driving referral traffic back to your website or driving actions in order to do what you would like people to do. 
So if you're posting a picture of a car, make sure you're including a bit.ly link that's sending people to that page on your dealership's website or where that car actually resides. So they take a look at one, at one picture and they're really excited, give them more pictures and the ability to get there really quickly. Because this is how people jump around on Facebook because you're just another number. There's a lot of posts that are coming through here. In fact, it's really hard to show up anywhere within the newsfeed. Here's something that uh, it's, we, we don't say this often, but only 16% of posts from any page show up in your fans' newsfeed. So if you have 1,000 fans and you post something, there's a likelihood that only 160 people are seeing that. And if you've generated those fans through some contest, like you're giving away iPads or a car and people don't really care about your dealership, so they liked you once and they've never liked any piece of content. In fact, they've probably just turned you off. The number really goes down. I mean, this can be as low as three, four, five percent of your fans are actually seeing any of these posts. So the way that we're determining how these posts are going into your newsfeed is based upon relevance and engagement. So I'll kind of show you a story. Um, here's a story about a dude named John. And John loves your dealership. And you post things and John likes it. And he'll like these things, he'll comment on these things, he'll share these things. Because John is an advocate and a fan of your dealership and your dealership's content, the likelihood, oops, the likelihood of your post showing up in John's newsfeed is very, very high, just organically. Don't have to do anything. You post something, John's gonna see it, he likes you, he's probably gonna like it. This is good stuff. Now, here's a young lady named Anna. And she went to a wedding this past weekend. If any of you guys have been to a wedding, a party, a concert, and where people are taking a lot of pictures, you get inundated with all of these, all this information from your friends after you're done with that. Well, that's what's happening to Anna. So she's getting a lot of pictures from this wedding that she just attended. Pictures of her, smiling brides, everyone's happy, kumbaya. So she's seeing this in her newsfeed. Now, because of this, she's engaging with content that her friends care about, and she's liking these photos, and she's engaging, she's commenting, and she's, she's participating in this, and her friends are doing the same. So, in order to get in her newsfeed with a relevant story, you got to promote that story. And promoting that story is done through advertising. You can do it in line when you actually post something through Facebook, if you have a billing account set up, or you can do this kind of after the fact as well. But if you have something really important that you want to communicate out to each one of your fans, and you want to ensure that up to 85% of that audience actually receives that message, this is the way to make sure that happens. So if you're not doing this, the likelihood of that, that this being seen by Anna is very, very low just based upon where she's at. So it's important to get here as much as possible. So here's some just kind of examples that I pulled um, of some posts that really resonate. And your OEM partners are doing a great job of this because they're representing big brands and how people aspire in order to own something or purchase something or be something. So Jeep is an example, their tagline, go anywhere. And if you take a look at Jeep's posts, this is what they represent. It's people going anywhere in Jeeps. So they're driving through mud, they're driving through snow. It's, again, less than 90 characters, and then a big photo that talks about something. Now, their intent with these posts isn't to drive people back to a page to actually purchase something. They're literally looking to just form some engagement with the Jeep audience. But connecting these types of aspirational images to Jeep buyers is really important. And people really, really interact with this kind of stuff too. So they have a, a Mud Monday or a Mod Monday that they've, uh, where they're encouraging people to post photos of their dirty vehicle from after the weekend or uh, some sort of modifications they've made to their Jeep. So you can do the same thing because each one of the brands that you represent has a message and people are aspiring to live this dream of owning this vehicle and these are the types of experiences that we should be happening that should be happening. So make sure you're leveraging whatever that brand message is and take a look at what your OEM partners are posting in order to see if you can take some kind of best practices from that as well. Here's another example of BMW. So their tagline, inspiring and enabling sheer driving pleasure. And if you take a look at their photos, they got some sexy shots of cars. Inspiring, sheer driving pleasure. I mean, you can do the same thing. I mean, again, this is, this is serious car porn that we have here. I mean, these are some real cool images here. This is something that you need to think about posting when you're developing a posting strategy and you're taking photos of your vehicle. So it's just, the, it's the same premise of if you're taking photos of your inventory and it's parked in between other vehicles and you're, this is what your vehicle details page look like, it's just a really poor representation of those products, make sure that these pictures shine. Because when people are on their mobile phones, this is what they're gonna see. It's gonna be your dealership's name, it's gonna be the photo that you just took, 
and then 90 characters here, and hopefully there's going to be a link that's going to take them to do something else. So make sure that you're really thinking about this every time you're posting something through Facebook. This is a product Facebook offers that a lot of dealerships have been using. How many of you guys have experimented with Facebook offers? And I'm going to have some hands there. How many Facebook users have seen offers in their newsfeed? How many of you thought that Facebook offers weren't a Facebook product and just something out there and you didn't want to click on it because you thought maybe you'd get spammed? <laughs> All right, get that left too. Just curious. Um, so Facebook offers, uh, this is our product that allows you to offer something and then get a redemption and drive in dealership traffic. So the way the product works is you create an offer. And this works better for fixed operations than it does vehicle purchases. The reason being is people are only going to be in the market for a vehicle every three to six years. People are always in the market for service. What really works here are BOGO oil changes. So buy one, get one free oil change, some sort of service offer. Everyone's in the market for an oil change at any point in time, and so are their friends. So this is something we've seen to work really well, and we'll go into a case study that we uh, put together here in a moment. But the way it works is this show, you, you put an offer on your page, and then you put a budget behind that in order to determine how many of your fans are actually going to see this offer. Once your fans see this offer, they're going to redeem that offer, and that redemption triggers an action that goes out to all of their friends, letting them know that Patrick Workman just redeemed a buy one, get one free oil change from your dealership. So if my friends are in the market for an oil change in that local market, they're probably going to click redeem as well. And once they click redeem, it's going to send them an email. And this email can be provided however you guys want to track this. It can be either on the phone. You can put a barcode or a QR code in order for your service department to scan this. You can put a redemption code so you're actually tracking the performance of these campaigns. But this is the mechanism in order to drive in dealership traffic from your audience through Facebook. So, and again, it's, if you're doing a 1.9% uh, Honda Odyssey uh, lease special, like this isn't going to work really well because there's a very limited portion of your audience that's interested in financing a Honda Odyssey at any point in time, but everyone's interested in getting their vehicle service. So you kind of have to think back of the house with a lot of these offers. The Castle Automotive Group in the Chicagoland area, they experimented with some offers uh, a couple of months ago, and they put a $500 budget behind uh, a Facebook offer, a buy one, get one free oil change, and it produced $12,000 in incremental service revenue from those customers. They had a redemption code at the end and they were tracking everything. So that's 24 times ROI on a $500 spend. Boom! It's big. It's like picking up what I'm laying down, like this, is, this is good stuff. Like offers work. Like we know offers work. So if you have offers, align with your service managers. What are they offering? What is their direct mail strategy? What are they mailing out to people? What are they emailing people? Take those same Take those same messages and send those out to your Facebook audience. Where we see this going in the future is linking this up with custom audiences. So, so this is, sometimes we talk in terms of Spacebook. So it's kind of spacey because it's not really happening right now. Um, so this is kind of a Spacebook thought because uh, we don't have this. You can't, go to your, you can't go to one of your direct marketing companies and they're just going to take care of this for you. But if we link custom audiences with offers or other posts, now you're able to segment your customers through Facebook in the exact same way that you're currently doing. So you know when your customers are going to be in the market for an oil change based upon their activity and their history with your dealership, and you're sending them direct mail campaigns through the mail as well as email. Facebook opens up another channel in order to make that happen. So we're actively working with those companies in order to offer these types of solutions, just opening up that audience to Facebook. Because again, 20% of all time spent on the internet in the United States is spent on Facebook. If you haven't written that down, please write it down. I'll probably not say it again. So uh, have any of you guys played with Facebook Nearby? This is something that we haven't talked about yet. Um, Facebook Nearby, a couple people out there. Okay, um, every one of you has Facebook Nearby on your phones right now. No one knows about it because we've kind of hidden it. Um, not on purpose, just we're working on the user interface in order to see how this works. So this is our introduction into local search. So the way Nearby works is if you go to your Facebook app, click on the upper left-hand button, you're going to see Nearby. You click on Nearby, and it's going to open up a map, and it's going to geolocate you where you're at. You then have the ability to search for something that you may be interested in, a coffee shop, a restaurant, a club, a hotel, a gas station. Um, and Facebook Nearby will then offer up the suggestions of where you should go. So these suggestions are fed through uh, likes of pages, 
So whoever has the most likes and the highest recommendations, because now once somebody likes your page, they also have an opportunity to recommend you and rate you as well. So that's the way that we're aggregating all of this. So again, it's, this makes having that audience and making sure that you have actual customers that would recommend you uh, as fans of your Facebook page so much more important. So you guys have this product. Um, in fact, uh, if you're using this at the bottom of the left-hand screen, if you have any feedback kind of regarding nearby, um, we've opened that up to users as well too. So this is something that we're testing. It's not a huge focal point, but uh, it, it's really cool and has a lot of potential in order to connect customers with your dealerships. Here's, a, here's something that's like brand spanking new that we've definitely not talked about before. Um, mobile app installs. So how many of you have mobile apps for your dealerships? Couple people. Okay, actually, no, quite a few. Um, of those mobile apps, how do you get people to download those apps? Like, how do people actually find out about these apps? There's a point of purchase thing in the store, maybe send them an email after they've purchased something, encouraging them to download the app. The way that mobile app installs work is we can take, again, your customer database and we can target a mobile app install ad to those customers in order to encourage them to download your app. Because the biggest problem you have with your apps is getting those apps on people's phones. Well, bigger problem is getting people to use the app after the app actually is on the, uh, on the person's phone. But step one is how do you get these apps on the phone in order for you to really interface with your customers through these applications. So we've provided a way in order for you to do that. So if you're not using this, this is something that's open to all, each of you as well. So we have put together a kind of best practice guide that is a little bit more nuts and bolts and how to use some of our back-end tools. Uh, Power Editor is our ads manager product. Um, this will walk you through the steps in order to launch uh, ads, sponsored stories. Uh, we have some content suggestions in, in there as well. As, and we also have a kind of a download of some different solutions we have in the vertical. But if you go to facebook.com forward slash business forward slash automotive, you can download this. And more importantly, um, once you do this, we actually have a team of uh, Facebook experts that are dedicated to the automotive vertical that once you put in your information, they'll take a look at your Facebook page and they'll recommend strategies for you. Not just advertising, but posting um, what's working, what isn't working. They'll take a look at your profile picture, take a look at your cover photo, take a look at what your posting strategy is, maybe even go as far as to dive into your insights to see what is or is not working and provide guidance to you there too. So it's not just you're downloading a PDF, it's actually a team that's going to follow up with you in order to kind of give you some of that information. So lastly, we have a lot of kind of sayings at Facebook and one of my favorites is uh, this journey is 1% finished. So we've never connected a billion people before in the history of humans. There's never been a billion humans that have been connected on something. So luckily we've done that, but the mission doesn't start, stop there. We're trying to go above and beyond and connect with more people, especially those in developing countries. Um, third world countries represent our, our biggest uh, growth opportunity right now in order to get to people that don't necessarily have access to data and are using Facebook through uh, like Motorola Razor type phones, um, where they don't have any kind of graphical interface and pictures don't matter, but they're learning to use Facebook through text codes. So in order to post something, you have to type a one, and you're actually like typing things out via text in order to make this happen. So they don't need this big graphical interface that we have here in the States, because we have access to data, and we have these really fancy phones. They just need something in order to connect with their communities and their friends through the devices that they have. But our journey is far from done. Because now that we've connected all these people, the opportunities are limitless in terms of what we can do in order to really offer value to their overall experience. So I urge each of you, kind of as you're posting on Facebook or interacting with your customers, just proceed and be bold. Because we've never done this before and we're all learning at the same time. So there is no wrong answer here. All we can do is learn from successful strategies that have proven, that have proven themselves in the past. So I'm gonna be around here for lunch. If any of you guys have specific questions regarding Facebook, more than happy to answer those. If I don't have an answer for you, if you give me your information, I'll make sure to follow up with you um, after, the, uh, after the conference. So again, Patrick Workman, ISO Cars at Facebook. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Patrick. Do we have some questions from the audience that uh, I can move the mic over to? Oh, spilling water on your iPad is not good. We got some questions. Where's, where's a hand? Oh, coming around, coming around. Uh, you said the sweet spot for posting. Uh, do you have any recommendations on that, on how often? 
So it, it varies based upon the engagement levels of your community. So it, it varies based upon your posts as well. So if you've established your voice and now you've determined why people would actually follow, would actually fan you and care about what you're posting, that's really the, that's really the key. So things that we see to really resonate within kind of tier three automotive are offers. So why would somebody fan a dealership page in order to receive something? So uh, again, they're not looking for pictures of animals. They're not looking to be really, really entertained kind of outside of automotive. I fan your, I'm a fan of your dealership, give me something. And what is that something? It's not giving away freebies or concert tickets or things like that. It's, you have an oil chain special? I wanna know about their oil chain special. If you have a service clinic going on, I wanna know about that service clinic. It's things like that. So there is no silver bullet from a posting strategy perspective, but once you start thinking about it that way, you're gonna see what's resonating with your audience and kind of what people are engaging with, and then that's gonna determine the frequency for your particular page. All right, we have another question. Did you take all those notes? Man, okay, Patrick, I'm a little nervous here. I'm kind of scared too. Here we go. It's a big notebook. Only one question. Um, you had mentioned custom audiences where a dealership can upload our customer list to you and then you, you help build the pages based upon uh, matching that. Can you expound on that a little bit? Yeah, so you have an Excel file of your customers. You upload that on your computer, on your desktop, so we're not actually receiving anything. We take that, as soon as we receive that information, we uh, use hashed, it's called hashing, where essentially we take every character that exists within that, within that spreadsheet, because we don't want your information. In fact, we want to stay as far away from it as possible. We then hash all that up, put it into a black box. We then hash user information on Facebook side, and then we match it up and we create an audience. So based upon the relevancy and, well, excuse me, the recency of when those customers were in your dealership, um, we have anywhere between a 50 to 90% match rate. So if you send us a list of customers that haven't been in your store for eight years, match rates can be pretty low. If you send us customers that have been in your shop for within the past year, email addresses and telephone numbers, it's gonna be pretty spot on. You're gonna see match rates around 75, 90%. Once you have that audience, you can do a lot of things with that. You can launch Facebook ads, you can do offers, you can do mobile app installs. So whatever your marketing objective might be to that audience, you can leverage Facebook as that channel in order to have that, that conversation. And a lot, again, a lot of the, you can do this on your own. There's a lot of digital marketing companies that are including custom audiences within their overall service suite too. And uh, it really works. I know uh, Ralph and I, when we did AutoCon, we basically loaded up the ADM uh, membership list and uh, ISM, uh, sent it up, got it filtered, and uh, people said, right, Ralph, that uh, they saw AutoCon everywhere on Facebook. Yeah, everywhere. Questions for Patrick. This is really, really great stuff coming down. Get my morning run in that I skipped this morning. So, so Facebook offers used to have a requirement of 400 likes, and I think it dropped to 100. Have you eliminated that, or what is it today? Yeah, so it's still at 400 likes. So, and the reason being isn't the reason being is if you don't have 400 likes, with the distribution of the newsfeed, the offers just don't work very well. So we'd rather you not spend money on an offer if you haven't established an audience first. So it's kind of blocking and tackling. You have to establish an audience for your dealership before you're launching offers to that audience. So if you had a page with 100 people and you're sending out an offer to that audience, even if you were promoting it, it's just that there aren't enough people there in order to really get traction. So you're not getting the bang for your buck, so we're not allowing marketers to market there. Great, questions? Uh, you said that the Facebook photo to have a logo as your dealership. I've heard that it's better to have engagement with customers to have a person as the photo there. What, do you see any differences there? Or? If the person's the owner of the dealership and they've branded themselves in the local community, absolutely. That would make sense because individuals would then identify that picture of that person with that car dealership because that's what they're seeing through traditional means. If not, and it's just some person, it's faceless. So you're communicating as a dealership with, because it's going to come up there that you're XYZ dealership, that's what it's gonna say you are, and there's gonna be a random picture of somebody that nobody knows. So whatever's next to that name is really important, and that should be your logo in order to let people know that this is who we are, this is what we're representing, and I'm speaking in the voice of the page that I'm representing. Okay, other questions? All right, while I'm walking back, Patrick, if dealers load up their list and do retargeting, um, are they being charged on a per impression basis or on a per click basis for Facebook retargeting? 
depends on what product they're utilizing. So it's either CPM or CPC. Um, well, let me let me just re let me let me make sure I understand the question. So from a retargeting perspective, that's different. So retargeting is happening through another vehicle, and in fact, retargeting is not something you can do through Facebook. So you have to work with a company that's currently doing retargeting as part of one of our programs. A lot of the digital marketing companies that you're working with today have formed relationships with those organizations in order to do Facebook retargeting. As it relates to custom audiences, though, you can do that on either a CPM or cost per click basis, depending upon what ad product you're looking at. We always, rep re we always recommend utilizing CPM over cost per click, and you, you might think that we're saying that in order just to be greedy, but the reality is if you ask us to do an ad for you and it's on a cost per click basis, we're gonna serve that ad up to people that click on a lot of ads. You want clicks, we're gonna give you clicks. So that's the audience. Not just being sneaky, it's just that's what you want. You want clicks, we're gonna give you clicks. If you want a lot of people to see it, use CPM. So as a best practice, we always recommend that our marketing partners utilize CPM over CPC. Uh, you just talked about um, having a minimum number of likes in order to uh, tap into the custom audience uh, application. I'm just curious, you know, I mean, all, all of the dealerships here have talked about having a Facebook page. I'm curious what sort of the average number of likes is that dealerships are experiencing. I don't have an average number of likes. And actually, we've taken a look at this. It, it really varies. I mean, we, we've seen um, websites, and, well, we've seen Facebook pages in very large metro areas for Toyota and Honda dealerships that have 20 fans. It's a matter of emphasis that those dealerships have put on those Facebook pages. So, and it's not about numbers. So, like rewind uh, a couple years ago, and if I were up in front of you guys telling a story about Facebook, it'd be pretty. It'd be a different story. We'd be talking about generating stories and getting a lot of fans and get as many fans as possible. Let's make this happen because the solutions we had in place from a direct response perspective weren't there. Now we have the ability to actually connect with your audience and show you who your audience is, and these are your customers, this is who you need to connect with. So now you can utilize that in order to really communicate and market effectively. Um, your, I mean, the best Facebook audience is your audience based upon customers that actually care about you. So I mean, there's Facebook pages out there that have you know, 100 people that like them that are really great Facebook pages because those 100 people love that page and love that entity. And if that page went out and just chased a, chased a number of fans just to hit something, it, it wouldn't be relevant to what they're looking to accomplish. So um, it's difficult to say kind of what those numbers are. In fact, if you have artificial fans and you're chasing fans through a giveaway type strategy, when you do eventually advertise and launch sponsored stories, you're now launching sponsored stories to friends of people that liked you in order to get an iPad. So it's not really authentic. It's like false, false friends of people that said they liked you to do one thing, and now you're leveraging that social context in order to accomplish one of your goals, but they don't really like you. And in fact, if those people ask their friend of, hey, Patrick, did you really like them? I'm like, nah, I don't like them, I just wanted to get an iPad. And it went either, so I don't like them at all. In fact, I'm gonna unlike them. Patrick, um, and not asking you to play favoritism or anything, but this audience uh, wants to engage, they're looking forward to this uh, presentation. <clears throat> Are there some dealer Facebook pages that you could say, if you want to see someone who's really doing a good job, is that a fair question to ask you, or does that put you yeah. in a tough no, situation? No, absolutely. Um, so, Rick Case Honda in Florida, they're doing a great job. Automotive News actually recently had a, uh, there we go. Got a fan of Rick Case Honda back there. That's, uh, that's big, way to go, Ralph. Um, so that's one I take a look at. Um, Herb Chambers, Honda of Seekonk, in mass. Here we go, here we go. Got a hype man back here. I don't see a foam finger or any like air horn or anything, this is good. Um, yeah, another one, um, Castle Chevrolet. That's a good one to take a look at. But from a, if you're looking from a posting strategy perspective of what to really post, take a look at like TechCrunch or Fab.com because like those are, those are the brands that are doing this right and are really generating referral traffic back to their sites. They're really the pros. TechCrunch, TechCrunch, it's an industry blog. It's an industry tech blog. Um, there's a lot of them out there, Mashable, uh, Engadget, any blog that's out there that has a large readership, they're all doing it the same way. So um, I used to say Perez Hilton because I like real trashy celebrity gossip, but I get laughed at sometimes, so. Great, uh, other, that, so other questions from okay. the audience? Here's one right here. I just don't wanna make you walk too far. Um, Patrick, when, 
if you have a dealership that has a, a large number of inflated fake fans, if you will, and you want to start engaging in targeted, mark, in targeted audiences, would you recommend eliminating some of those friends, or what kind of strategies would you use to go about doing that the right way? You can't, you can. the reality is, like to have a fan count like that, these fans aren't engaged and they don't really care, and we're going to, we're going to serve up like those ads and that type of targeting accordingly. So if you were giving away an iPad and for some reason a lot of people in Singapore started to like your page and we're launching sponsored stories about a post that you have on your page to friends of that person in Singapore, unless your dealership's in Singapore, they're probably not gonna like that. Their friends just don't really care. We're gonna see that and then we're gonna optimize those ads appropriately. So it's not necessary to take the effort and go, back, go through and eliminate fans. It's just don't do it to, to start. Would, would there be any reason if somebody had 10, 20, 30, 50,000 inflated fans that they should just kill the page and start fresh? I don't know. There's a lot of them out there, too. I don't really have the right answer there. Um, I, well, we have, I haven't seen that happen yet. Um, but there are some artificially inflated pages out there that, that could be a strategy that would make sense. You'd have to test it. From like an A-B perspective, um, we're doing ads here, we're targeting here, what page is more effective with what audience. I can guarantee you that the page that is connected to your customers is going to, is going to offer more local engagement from your actual customers than any other page. Any other questions? We have time for one more before we, uh, well, it looks like we had two hands at the same time, so we'll get two questions, and then lunch is served. Can you speak on best posting times? Because there's a lot of different studies out there. Does it vary per dealership, or is there one great time to post? Yeah, so there's a report that came out. Um, if you Google Buddy Media best time to post on Facebook, um, Buddy Media is a social syndication platform that Salesforce recently purchased. Um, they came up with a best strategy guide based upon their automotive clients. Uh, the best times to post for auto pages were Wednesdays and Saturday and Sunday. So that's according to their research. We don't have any real guidance in terms of when to post, but that's the best report that I've seen. Okay, here's the last question. Uh, really quick, I guess my question is on best uh, practices. For a dealer group, did you recommend to have an individual account for each store or one for the group? So that's a really great question and it's something that a lot of people that have dealer groups are kind of struggling with. Very similar to websites, um, if you have multiple locations, you're going to need pages for each one of those locations. The advantage of that is kind of twofold. I showed you the nearby product. If you just had a dealer group, you're just going to have one location. You have more than one location. So from a map and finding you in the future, that's one thing. But your customers vary by brand as well. So your Ford customer isn't like your Audi customer. So if you have one content stream for all customers of all brands, it might not be the best experience and offer the right value to each one of those individual customers. So as a best practice, you can have a dealer group page that maybe talks about what you're doing as a group in the community, like very, very high level, but each one of those individual pages needs to have a strategy kind of behind it as well. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, can you express your gratitude for Patrick flying in to share this hour with you? Thanks everyone.